Hey folks, my guest today is Noah Bragg. He started his entrepreneurial journey creating multiple projects in college. And then after college, he started his first real startup called Coffee Pass with his roommate. It was an app like the Starbucks app, but for local coffee shops. After working at that startup for two years, it was acquired. Now, Noah is indie hacking, building businesses at a similar scale and can at least work for him uh, and his family. Potion.so is his current focus. It's a website builder built on top of Notion. All right, Noah, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. Hey, touch on Coffee Pass for a second. How many, so did, was this revenue generating at any point? Yeah, so it it wasn't a ton, and that was kind of one of the problems with the business. We had around twenty five coffee shops that were using it, but we were probably only doing like three hundred dollars a month in our own profit. Um, a lot of the money, you know, was going to the coffee shops, and that was you know uh, the revenue for them. So it wasn't making a ton of money, and that was one of the problems we saw with the the business. Interesting. Okay, so let's let's jump into Potion now. So, I mean, should we think about this like Weebly or Wix or Squarespace, but for Notion? Yeah, basically. I mean, it's it's a website builder. You can build really, you know, tons of different kinds of websites with it. But yeah, it's built on top of Notion. So you kind of use Notion to put in your content, kind of create your basic layout, and then with Potion, you can add some extra custom like styles and design on top of it. Um, and it hosts it for you. So yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty cool kind of website builder. I'm having fun creating. What are companies paying you on, or people you know builders creating you on average per month to, to use the tech? Yeah, so uh, I have uh, eight dollars uh, a month for one site, sixteen for three sites, and twenty four uh, for eight sites. Those are the different the plans. Averages eight or sixteen. Um, usually, you know, the probably eighty five percent of people are just doing one site. Um, I think my average uh, revenue per customer is around nine dollars, so that that's it just ticks up a little bit. Yeah, I want to talk about how you've grown this. So, um, big in, in terms of getting new users on the platform of the last twelve months, what was sort of the biggest tactic tactic you did? Yeah, so mostly what I've been doing is just building in public on Twitter. Um, I'd say probably about eighty five percent of my customers have have come from that, um, and then the other percentage have been. Um, either word of mouth or this uh, Facebook group called uh, a Notion Facebook group with thirty thousand people in it. What's the name of that of that group? Uh, Notion made simple. Did you build the group? Uh, I did not. No, it's it's a Notion group that's already been there, and I've kind of been sharing some things there along the way, and that's where I got some customers. That's smart. Now, when did you launch this? Um, about four ish months ago. Okay, so all in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I, I started working on it at the end of 2020, um, like November. Um, but then I launched it uh, like a private early access in January and then actually launched uh, early ac- access in February. And then like a month later, kind of opened it up to, to everybody. Um, so yeah, it's been around four months. Mm-hmm. So the Facebook group is, is one way you did this. You also had a very successful product hunt launch on May 24th. You got over a thousand upvotes. How much traffic did you get from this ranking? Yeah, so I got... Uh, 2.8k on the first day, and then um, yesterday I got another 1.5k, um, and about half of those were from Product Hunt. Um, the other half, kind of from the buzz going around on Twitter. Um, but yeah, the the Product Hunt launch went pretty well, so I was pretty stoked with that. Um, and seeing a lot of signups come in, so that's been good. Sorry, is that 2,800 visits or signups? Uh, visits. Yep, those are visits. And then you said 50% of those convert to paid. Um, yeah, so so people that actually sign up um, with the credit card upfront trial, right now my numbers around fifty percent of those end up becoming paid customers. We'll see how product hunt you know customers is different with that or not. But yeah, how many how many trial signups did you get from product hunt? Do you know yet? Yeah, so let's see. I'm looking at the numbers right this here. This just two days. Just so everyone knows, this was just two days ago. Right. Um, so yeah, day of, I got 39 signups with credit card up front and yesterday. So the day after 26. Okay. So, so not horrible. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty darn good. That's what is that? 60, about 60, uh, signups. Now the question is, can you get more than 50% of them to convert? Yep. That's the question. Yeah. Interesting. What sorts of things are you doing on the onboarding to try and increase conversion rate to the full-time paid? Yeah. So, and this was actually some of the stuff I was just working on before the launch because I knew that would be a you know important thing. I don't want to lose people in the leaky bucket. So I made like a, a video that's the first thing you see, just a two minute video that really like easily walks you through the steps and is trying to push people to see the value of okay, this is what your site could look like. Um, 
because that's really the big aha moment, right? Is once people have created a website, then they're, they kind of see the value and hopefully they're locked in. And so I'm trying to push people to that point. Um, I also created like a, a, a six day, like email kind of drip, um, that kind of keeps sharing like some, some tips or some guides or showing some other websites created with potion to kind of show them the value of it, to kind of keep them going. Um, and then also I added some, uh, emails based on like events. So like when they do something in the app, uh, it might have a, a unique kind of email I'll send to kind of like maybe help them if they're stuck in an area or something like that. Um, so yeah, those are the things I, I'm kind of doing to kind of push that onboarding process so that, you know, hopefully people created their site before their seven day trial ends and they see the value. Interesting. And how many, you know, our privacy products are just one way you've gotten customers. How many total people are paying today? Yeah, so I have right now 79 paid uh, subscribers. And so that that's obviously all before product hunt and um, have around almost that number of people that are on the trial currently. Yeah, so if you can convert, obviously a chunk of them, your revenue is going to grow quick here. But assuming none of them convert, you're still about what, 800 bucks, your first 800 bucks in MRR, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm right at $700 MRR. Yeah, this is great. So yeah, again, depending on how many of these you convert, maybe you double your revenue here uh, from product time. You, can, you know, it's harder to say you double your revenue once you have like a million or two or three million in revenue. But yeah, <laughs> it, it's more sure. At this, at this stage, so this is great. So uh, two questions. I mean, where are you in life? Are you working on this full time? I'm not. I have a full time job right now. Okay. So like, what has to happen at Potion for you to go? Oh my gosh, I just can't go to my full time gig anymore. I've got to keep building this. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the plan already. Like, that's what I want to do. Um, I guess really it's, it's a matter of timing as well as, um, I think I would raise like a little bit of capital from kind of like a bootstrapper friendly kind of investor, um, to kind of help me kind of in that stage between, you know, potion, uh, creating enough money for me to live on, as, um, and, and kind of getting to that point. Um, so yeah, I'd like to do that in the next, I don't know four or five months, basically. How much did you look to raise? Uh, somewhere around like 120 to 150 K. Mm-hmm. And you definitely sort of want to go down, you, you know, that's, you're going to get about 10, 15, maybe 20% of the business and then really be on that VC track. Is that something you'd go down or would you look at some of the alternative financing options? Yeah. So I don't want to go on the VC track. Um, I'm more interested in investors like tiny seed or earnest capital, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and same thing there, though, you're still, you know, in both those models, you're giving up 10, 11% of the equity. Now you can buy it back over time, right? At, right. In, you know, at a certain rate. Um, but are you, I guess you're not opposed to really giving up equity to make that happen. Yeah, no, I'm not too opposed to that. Yeah. And why do you need that much capital to be able to pull the trigger and jump into this full time? I mean, are you able to, I imagine you're able to keep your personal expenses pretty low. So you have enough runway. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's, it's a matter of the kind of company I want to build isn't, you know, I'm not trying to build the next unicorn or anything like that. And so I want to, you know, I want to build like a calm kind of, uh, business that I can enjoy that, you know, works at least for me, hopefully a small team at some point. And, um, I think just, you know, kind of taking it slow a little bit, uh, makes sense. Um, some, some of the other reason is I actually have, uh, some stock options with my current company that come about October. So I'm also kind of waiting for that, but (laughs) That October cliff. All right, cool. Um, all right, let's keep going down the, the, the thing here. So you're, you're working on trial to conversion, right? We already heard about that. We, we've talked about some of your early launch strategies. It's just you right now, correct? Right. And you own 100% of the business? Yep. That's great. Um, I mean, wh- what's the plan? How do you go from you know 100 customers to 500 customers? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, Twitter has been... The- my kind of main place and I'll, and I'll keep to kind of build in public and do that there. Hopefully like I've definitely seen some word of mouth kind of happen on Twitter from that kind of stuff. So I'll keep that, but I definitely want some more, you know, channels to grow. Um, so one of the things I've been starting to look at is like affiliate marketing, partnering with other like notion creators. There's quite a few of, you know, a few people in the notion space that have, um, you know, decent sized audiences. So if I can partner with them in some ways, I think that can be a really good way to get new people seeing what I'm up to. Um, <clears throat> probably do some SEO at some point, um, kind of do some more in that front. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, those, those are some of my kind of early things. I might try to partner with like that, that 
Facebook Facebook group I mentioned that has like 30,000 people in that. Um, so if there's, you know, good ways that I can kind of partner with them, maybe sponsor them. Um, but yeah, still a lot to do to kind of figure out in the marketing. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully really just build the, the word of mouth. I think that can be a, a big thing. And so really just making my product really, really good, I think can be kind of the driver for a lot of that. Um, so yeah, there's still lots of things I can do on the product. And did you develop the product yourself or like, are you a developer? I did. Yep. That's great. And the design. Yep. Uh, you, you did this animation of this lady, like painting the website on the homepage. Okay. No, that was like a, I don't know, a hundred dollar like image kit that I bought. I love that. <laughs> I love getting these stories of like how we make this stuff, how the MVP gets out the door, you know? Right. All right. Very, very cool. This is great. Um, what about additional features you might be adding on, you know, next 12 to 24 months? Yeah. So it's, it's cool. Cause there's a, I mean, there's a lot of directions you could go with a website builder. You know, there's so many different kinds of websites that people want to build. And so mostly my niche has been, you know, solo entrepreneurs, founders, like kind of like creating a little business or, or portfolio kind of websites. Um, and so one of the things I'm looking to do here pretty soon is make it really easy for people to add and take payments on their website so they can sell like digital products and things like that. Um, so that's kind of one of the areas I'm looking into um, and, and going to do soon. And then one of the areas I've really looked a lot into is kind of actually going up market to companies um, with like API docs and help docs. Because um, there's some companies that already kind of do this on Notion. They'll kind of create like documentation, things like that, that's public. Um, and so kind of creating tools that make sense for them to do that and, and work well with a team. Um, there's definitely some, I think, growth and area there. And then, you know, the cool part of that is I could go up market a little bit and sell to some bigger companies. Mm -hmm. Hey, it all sounds like a great plan. It'll be fun to watch you execute. In the meantime, though, Noah, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite book? Ooh, right now I'd say Atomic Habits. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, uh, hmm, sorry, no, not really. I, I follow lots of other indie hackers and, and kind of bootstrappers. Favorite indie hacker? Uh, Kenneth Castle. What's he building? He's building slip.so. Very cool. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Stripe. And number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, it's been a lot less this week with the product don't launch, but, uh, yeah, I mean, typically eight hours, eight hours a night and situation married, single kiddos. Yeah. I'm married and have two kids married with two kids. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 26. 26. Last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Um, I guess I wish I, I knew just how much opportunity there is to kind of kind of go and do your own thing. Guys, it's, it's crazy once, you, yeah. It's crazy once you see like just how much you can do, um, kind of being an entrepreneur and stuff, and and seeing all the possibilities uh, instead of just being on like the the college track. Guys, Noah Bragg, Potion.so, build your website quickly in a no code way, right on top of Notion. He got his first customers by hustling on his Twitter account. Then did a product hunt launch last week, added about seventy nine new trials, hoping about fifty percent convert to paid. Currently, eighty people paying about ten bucks a month, so about seven hundred, eight hundred bucks a month in revenue. He's hoping to scale this and ideally get it to the point where he can leave his full-time gig and build this full-time. Noah, thanks for taking us to the top. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at NathanLacka.com 
forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.